So the first part of our study guide, we're looking at 1 through 15. So in problem number one, they give you an expression and they want you to simplify it. What should be our first step in this problem? The distributive property. So we go over here and we're distributing this 3. And you should have done 3 times 4m is 12m. And then 3 times 2 is a positive 6. Everything else in your um, expression stays the same. The 8m plus 5 is still there. Okay? Now what do I need to do to simplify this expression? I'm going to combine like terms. So what term is like 8m? 12m. And the reason that they are like terms is because they both have an m. So 8m plus 12m is 20m. And then your other two terms do not have variables. They are called constants. So I can do 5 plus 6 and get 11. So final answer should be 20m plus 11. Technically, you could also have 11 plus 20m. And that means the same thing. But you normally will have expressions written out where you have the um, term with the variable listed first. Okay? Any questions about problem one? All right, let's look at problem number two then, where you were selecting all that apply. So remember, whenever you're selecting all, it's normally more than just one. So we want things that equal 16m plus 32 once it's simplified. So in A, we can combine those like terms. We can do 4m plus 12m, and that gives me 16m. So, so far, so good. It matches. And then we can combine the 12 and the 20 to get 32. So A definitely works. Looking at B, we would need to distribute. So if I distributed the 8, and I did 8 times 2m, that would give me 16m. But then I would need to do 8 times 32, and that is obviously not going to be 32. Do I need to really worry about what it equals? No, I just know that it's not going to be 32, and it's not going to be B that I want to choose then. Looking at C is also distributing. 4 times 4m is 16m, and then 4 times 8 is 32. So this one works, C. Looking at D, I can combine like terms. 10m and 16m give me 26m. Is that going to work? No. So it's not D. When I look at E, distributing, 8 times 2m is 16m. 8 times 4 is 32. So E works. And then last, looking at F, 16 times m is 16m, and then I would need to do 16 times 32. Obviously, that's not going to equal 32, so it's not going to be F either. So your choices for number two should be A, C, and E. Any questions about problem number two? All right. Looking at number three, it's saying to simplify that expression, you can be rewritten as that. And what exa this is an example of what property? Associative property. Very good. So the associative property, if you recall, is when you are moving the parentheses. So you're grouping the numbers differently. So instead of 2m plus 5 being in parentheses, we have 4m plus 2m. The order of the terms stayed the same. 4m, 2m, 5. That's the order in both of the expressions. The only thing that changed was the where the parentheses are. Okay? Any questions about number 3? All right, number 4. We're looking for the error in number 4. And I know this is really small up here, but you have it on your paper right in front of you. So looking at the first step where the student distributed, did they distribute correctly in step one? Yes, they did. They did 4 times 2m, and that's 8m, and they did 4 times 3, which is 12. So they distributed correctly. Looking at step two, they got a 20m. How do you think they got 20m? They did 8m plus 12. Can you do that? No. No. So step two is where they made their mistake. 
So describe the error in the student's work. What did they do that's incorrect? They what? They, they combined 8M and 12, which are not like terms. Okay, so combined, I would say, I wouldn't just say combined unlike terms. I would be very specific. Combined 8M and 12, but they are not like terms. So again, I would be very specific about the error. I would not just say they didn't combine like terms or they combined unlike terms. I would be specific about which terms they combined that they should not have combined. Ethan. Yes. Yeah, it'll be the same way. But the, the computer is where your answers are going to count. The paper is going to be more for looking back at your answers and stuff. All right, any other questions about number four? All right, so problem number five is where we are actually solving the problem. Now, when you do problem five on the computer, you only need to put in the simplified expression. You do not need to show your work on the computer, okay? So if we start off with the expression... So you can kind of work this out on your paper when you're actually doing the test. So distributing, that'd give you 8m plus 12 plus 6 plus 3m. And then combining your like terms, that would be the 8m and the 3m to give you 11m. And the 12 and the 6 would give you 18. So that would be your answer. And again, that is the only thing that you would need to put into the computer. You would not need to show your work. If you do, that's fine. You're not going to get counted off for showing your work, but you do not have to. All right, any questions about number five? All right, starting with problem number six then is where we start solving equations. So in problem number six, what should I do first? Distribute. Four times m is 4m. And what is four times a negative five? Negative 20. So that is what it should look like after your first step. Now what's my second step? Plus 20. So that'll give me 4m equals 32. And your last step? Dividing by 4. So m equals 8. Now I'm pretty sure that number 6 is a multiple choice problem, meaning m equals 8 would be one of your choices. So you do not have to have your work shown in the computer for this either. Okay? Any questions about 6? Looking at problem 7 then. I don't have any distributing, but I see that m over 5, which confuses some people, and I also see a decimal, which definitely confuses some people. You will be allowed to use a calculator on this test, so you should be fine. Okay? So what do I do first? Minus 0 0.8. Again, please use a calculator. There's no reason not to. So we have m over 5 equals, what is 3 minus 0 0.8? 2.2. How do I get rid of that 5? Multiply by 5. Very good. So the opposite of dividing by 5 is multiplying by 5. So we have to do this decimal, 2.2 times 5, and we end up with 11. Again, using a calculator so that we don't make silly mistakes by just doing things in our head. Always use a calculator when you're given the option. Any questions about number seven? All right, looking at number eight. Number eight wants you to choose all of the equations that would be correct for this problem. So each shirt costs $15, and we're using C for shirts. And then she's spending $6 for lunch. And she has a total of $66 to spend. So if you kind of look at these, I notice that A and C are similar to each other. I know that they are on opposite sides of the equal sign. But what is the, the main difference about A and C? Sophie, 
Sophie. What do you mean the variable's in the wrong place? Good. So we should not be doing the variable times 6. We should be doing the variable times 15. Yes? So A is not going to work for us, but C will work. Now, B and D are also similar to each other. The only difference is that one of them have the parentheses. So do I need to have the parentheses? Yes. And why, again, do we need to have them? Because order of operations. Very good. So C and D should be your choices on that. All right, number 9 and 10 kind of go together. You're writing an equation, which there will be uh, multiple different equations that are accepted for number 9. And then in number 10, you're solving the actual problem. Make sure when you are writing your equation that you have an equal sign. And what variable should you use in number 9? P. So look at the equation that you wrote right now on your paper. Do you have an equal sign? And did you use P? Or did you pick your own variable? Okay, so you have to use the variable that's given to you if you are indeed given one. All right, who is um, someone that would like to write an equation for me? Macy. Um, 78 equals... Thirty plus six p. That'll work. Now, unfortunately, if she really would have entered into the computer seventy five equals thirty plus six p, it'd be wrong. So please make sure you take your time on these and don't have any typos or anything. All right. Someone else would like to give me their equation. Tommy. All right, Tommy, go ahead. missing something. Would that work? No, that wouldn't work. We have some, we're, we're some missing something right here, right? What should that be? Divided by 6. Because if you do 78 minus 30, you get 48, and it then that's how much you spent on the, sh on the uh, well, no, wait. No, that's right. I was thinking about the last problem. <laughs> you would have 48, and um, then you would divide it by 6 for the amount per person, right? All right, anyone else want to check a, an equation? Obviously, you could flip-flop sides, and that's fine. All right, so when we're solving for problem number 10, once again, you do not need to have all of your work shown. You just need an answer. How many people can be invited? Eight people. Because $78 minus the cost of the room would mean you have $48 left over to spend on people. And if each person is $6, then 48 divided by 6 is 8. So your answer should be 8 people. Okay. Any questions about number 10? All right. Five more then. Starting with number 11, we get into the inequalities. If you recall, in number 11, I said there was a typo. It should be negative 22, not negative 24. We did talk about that on Friday. What is my first step in number 11? Addison? Minus 2. So if I subtract 2 on both sides, I'm left with negative 6m is greater than or equal to negative 24. Again, you can use calculators. So if you're not very good with your integers, put it in a calculator. What's my second step? Divide by negative 6. Now, because I am dividing an inequality by a negative number, what happens? The sign, the inequality sign reverses. So now I have m is less than or equal to a positive 4. So be very careful when you're choosing your answer on the test. You don't want to choose the one with the wrong inequality sign. I would have a feeling that there's probably an answer that's m is greater than or equal to 4. So be careful. Take your time. All right, looking at problem number 12, another inequality. Our first step is to add 6 to both sides. So that's going to give me 
m over negative 3 is greater than or equal to a negative 7. Once again, use calculator if you need to. And to solve this, now I need to multiply by negative 3. So whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, once again, that inequality sign reverses. So now I have m is less than or equal to positive 21. Any questions about number 12? All right, question number 13. So you actually have to solve the inequality in order to know which graph would match the solution. As I can see, all of these graphs are at negative two. So I know it's gonna be M and negative two. I just need to figure out what my symbol is going to be. So the first thing that I would do is add six so that's going to give me 3m is greater than negative 6. And then I'm going to divide by 3. I am dividing by a positive 3. So do I reverse my sign? No. So I'm going to leave it as greater than, and it's going to be greater than a negative 2. Now, as review, for greater than or less than, that's when you use an open circle. For greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, that's when you use a closed circle. So because we just have greater than, that automatically eliminates B and D. So A and C have that open circle, which is what we want. And which direction should I shade? To the right. Everything greater than negative two would be shaded to the right. So your answer for number 13 is A. Any questions? All right, then our last two kind of go together. 14 is writing the inequality and 15 is solving for the problem. It says that she has $27 to spend, a hairbrush is $12, and hair clips are $2.50 each, and we wanna know how many hair clips C she can buy. So first of all, in your inequality, did you use an inequality sign? And did you use the variable C? So those are requirements there. All right, who would like to tell me what their inequality looks like? Damon. Very good. So if you wrote it like this, notice that the, we'll call it the alligator, is not, not eating the C. Okay? This is the amount of money that you have. Okay? The amount of money that you have can be equal to those clips, or the amount of money you have can be greater than the clips. The clips that you get cannot be greater than the money you have. All right? So that's the way that you need to think about these things. All right, so if you reverse that, then that would be C is less than or equal to, and then that same expression that you had on the other side. All right, if you were someone that did 12 plus 250C, and then you had 27 over here, what symbol should I use for that one? Less than or equal to, right? Less than or equal to, because again, this is the money that you're spending. This is the money that you have. So the money that you're spending needs to be less than or equal to the money that you have. So really be thinking about your symbol when you're doing those. All right, any questions about 14? All right, and then so solving for number 15, once again, you will not have to show your work on the computer. Let's do 27 minus the amount that you spent for the hairbrush. That leaves you with $15 left for those hair clips. And if each hair clip is $250 and you have $15, we're using our calculators, and that would be six. So the amount of, you don't have to write an inequality as your final answer, but C should be less than or equal to six, okay? All right. 